Part two of this Tetris tutorial, this build that we're doing in processing, is going to require us to place the pieces now onto the board. Okay, so before we can even start about animating and all that stuff, let's just talk about building them. So the idea I have is a 2D array, and the reason I thought about that is because I can easily build these shapes in Google Sheets using rows and columns. Okay, it's a little bit different though. Each of the array is going to carry the coordinates of the points. So I'm not going to go by the indexes like I've seen other people do in their builds. I'm going to actually use the first element in the array to be X and the second element to be Y, just like you do with your points. The reason I did that is because when we go to rotate these or translate these, it's a lot easier for me to do because I've been teaching math for so long and we've been doing that for so long. It's actually a cool application of the math we learned. So let's go ahead and look at the shapes. So there's by the way, there's seven total shapes. I've only listed five here. I'm missing the S's. So there's an S this way and then the other S that goes the opposite. <clears throat> so with those two shapes and these five shapes, we're going to build those in as set shapes as parts of their own array. So they'll all, basically every shape has access to all seven shapes and they're just gonna select to be one of those shapes. All right, so like for example, if I wanted to be a square, I would be a 2D array and the values in each array, the first array would be zero, zero, the second one would be one, zero, then the third one would be zero, one, and the fourth one would be one, one, okay? And so on and so forth. You'll notice also that all of my arrays begin at zero, zero, okay? And, and that's just to keep them on the board. That may, everything is, is in the same starting position. I may later shift them up to get them off the screen, I'm not 100% sure about that, okay? So let's go ahead and dive in. So here we are, Tetris tutorial. So for example, I've got seven shapes there that are listed. So how I would write these as a 2D array, 2D array um, the fastest way is just to declare them and write them at the same time. So I'll say private int double array square equals, and then populate the array right away. So zero, zero. Um, we'll do one zero. Oops. We'll do uh, zero one, and we'll do one one, and then close the array and semicolon. So that's how you would do the square shape. All right. So let's go ahead and do the rest. If you want to pause the video, you can do them on your own as practice, or you can just follow the video and sing along. Okay, so we got the seven shapes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the rest of the field. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one more um, array that I'm gonna call the shape. So this one will be what the shape it actually is. So the first seven of those are just choices I'm gonna have and I'm gonna set the shape equal to one of those seven choices. I also want each actual piece, let's call it, to have um, R, G, and B variables, okay? And I also want it to have a choice variable. So that's gonna allow me to choose which of those seven I'm going to be. So I'm gonna, basically when I create the constructor, I'm gonna first decide what shape it is by using a random, and I'll make it an integer between zero and seven. And then I'll set it to one of those suckers. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, um, I'm gonna set R, G, and B separate for each of those. So for example, all squares will be one color. I don't know what color they're gonna be, but they'll all be red, let's say. And then all lines will be blue. That'll also make it easier when you're playing the game. Okay, now uh, one more thing I want to add is I want to add a private Boolean. And I'm gonna call this is active. And I'm probably gonna add more later, but um, for now, for the first part of the build, we're just going to see if we can get these shapes and make sure that they're working correctly. So let's go ahead and write public 
um, shape. And here's our constructor. I'm not going to take any parameters. I guess we could later on, but right now I don't think we need any. So let's begin by making our choice. So let's let choice be an integer between 0 and 7. So we'll let the computer randomly generate a number between 0 and 7. Um, and then what we'll do is um, we'll do a case and we'll do I'm sorry, what am I doing? Switch, and we'll do um, choice as our variable, our case variable, and we'll evaluate it for each of the numbers. So we'll do first case zero. What we're going to do is we're going to, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and put a, so remember with cases you use a colon, not a semicolon, and um, when you're finished you just do another one. So let's do, um, the first one we'll make a square, so we'll say shape, or the shape equals square. Did I call it square? I think I did, All right? Okay, and then we'll do, um, what else? Um, we'll say r is equal to 155. So remember, R, G, and B will all be zero unless I give it a value. So if I give it just R, that'll be red. So that'll be all of those red. Okay, so let's go ahead and then just say break. And we'll do the next one will be case one. So you can kind of do the rest of this following the same format, okay? So just go through all seven of those. Okay, so we've got all of the sh shapes. By the way, I added this private float W. So this will actually allow us to draw our rectangles the same exact size as our grid. So remember, um, our grid, we made a W that was width divided by 24, so from the last tutorial. So we'll do the exact same thing. I could technically go towards that other one, make a global variable, but I don't want to. I'm just gonna make it in its own variable. So these are my six uh, sorry, seven cases, zero through six, and they go through all those shapes. I also just turned up the the color. I just realized, why was I doing 155? I should do 255. It doesn't really matter what your colors are. As long as your colors are different, I mean, I guess it doesn't even matter if that's true. But let's go ahead and test it by doing public void display. So let's go public void display. Let's just kind of, let's just see if our shapes are showing up. So how are we gonna do this? So we're gonna go basically through all four of the blocks. So remember, our arrays are double arrays, four arrays of two dimensions, X and Y. So we just need one for loop actually for this. So we just do four int I equals zero, I is less than four, I plus plus. What you're actually gonna do is you're gonna draw a rectangle and your rectangle is going to be at whatever the shape index i zero, that's the x. Okay, so remember this right here because the whole tutorial I'm gonna talk about this. So the zero, the first element in the array is going to be the x, the second is the y. So whenever I'm thinking of x or y, I just index zero on the second part. Okay, so that's the x of each of those four blocks. And then I do the same thing for the y. So the shape i zero will be the y coordinate. And I'll do w, W for the width. Okay, so that's my public void display. And actually, this has to not just be the number, because remember these numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So we want these to be that number times W. So you actually take that times W. So for example, if it was 2 comma 0, it would shift it 2 times 20 or 40 pixels to the right and then place the block. Okay, and we'll do the same thing for the Y since they're the exact same width. So it's it's the X number that remember that number represents the coordinates, but the width of our grid is 20. So we've got to multiply by that W. Alright, so that should work. 
So let's go ahead and create one and just test it. So we'll call shape, shape. We'll initialize it here, new shape. And we just wrote display, so we could do shape.display. Hey, we're building Tetris. I love Tetris. It's like one of the best games ever. All right, yay. Oh, that does not look right. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. All right, so let's see what's happening here. Shape I zero. Oh, so you gotta do the Y. I, that's weird, I just like was talking about that. So remember, zero is the X coordinate. One is the Y coordinate. Almost had a part. Had it. Okay, so you notice they're all white. Okay, so the reason is because is I assigned them with color, but I haven't used them. So let's go ahead and add one line of code. We'll do fill RGB. Might as well just put it outside the loop. We don't need to do this more than once. Once we change the fill, it'll stay that way until we tell it to fill something else. So there's red square. Yay. So. That's awesome. So looking pretty good, guys. So now what we're going to do is now that we've got these shapes moving or working, let's see if we can start to move these things left, right, and down. And it's going to just get even more hard and fun. <laughs> All right. See you guys on the next one.